Hello everyone. Uh, so we will continue with um, our discussion of state space, but this time uh, we will uh, start taking a look at the design problem. Okay, so let's call this uh, state space uh, controller design. Okay, and we will uh, examine a particular method and it's called uh, as pole placement. Uh, pole placement uh, by state feedback. Okay, so uh, this fits into the general uh, problem of designing state space controllers. Okay, uh, remember uh, our classical uh, control. Okay. Uh, Uh, the classical control problem uh, for uh, this only applies to single input single output uh, systems okay uh, so what we had is basically uh, is that we have a reference signal V and uh, the system that is being controlled uh, that we call the plant G of S okay it generates an output but we measure that output and we apply uh, a gain and that feeds uh, into a competitor which generates an error signal that drives the si system. Okay, uh, This also uh, may take the form as follows. Okay, The gain may be on the feedback path but may also be just before the system itself. Okay, so in that case, we measure the output, we directly uh, feed it back to uh, the competitor, which generates the error. The error is being magnified uh, or multiplied by a gain K, uh, and that drives the system uh, to generate the output. Okay. So here, uh, the scalar gain uh, K is essentially our design parameter, okay? So uh, what kind of designs we may be after? Um, well, we might be uh, having system G of S unstable, for example, and we might want to make the system stable by uh, making a proper choice for K, okay? Or we might want to improve the stability of the system by uh, applying uh, a gain K, okay, in the system. So, uh, or, uh, you know, the purpose of the design might be able to, uh, uh, might be to achieve a certain transient or steady state uh, performance parameters, okay? Uh, so, we might say uh, choose K such that, um, let's say uh, closed loop system uh, becomes stable uh, Okay, these are all different kind of design problems, okay? Um, transient or rather given, right? Uh, closed loop. Uh, given transient and uh, steady state uh, performance performance metrics are satisfied or certain uh, relative stability uh, metrics such as uh, gain or phase margin are satisfied. Okay? 
So these are all uh, the kind of uh, design problems that we might have. But the common uh, point here is that we only have a single design parameter k. So this is uh, essentially a constraint, okay? And how do we um, how do we uh, achieve this kind of design? So uh, how to design, how to perform such design? Or uh, equivalently, it may be an analysis problem. If k is already given, then you might be just finding out uh, what those uh, uh, performance parameters are for the given system. Okay, uh, so we might have uh, you know tools like, for example, uh, Rao Torvitz. Uh, we might have root locus. We might have uh, essentially uh, body plots or Nyquist, uh, Nyquist diagrams. But all of these methods uh, only talk about uh, how to choose K in order to achieve uh, certain uh, performance parameters. Okay. Now, uh, what is the problem here is that the system may be such that uh, a single parameter may not be uh, enough to stabilize the system, okay? Uh, so, uh, a single uh, design parameter uh, may not be sufficient to achieve design objectives okay well um, let me give you an example here uh, for example if uh, your root locus is uh, something like this Okay, so uh, you have uh, open loop poles located as such, okay, in the S plane. Uh, you have two uh, poles, one of the poles is unstable, no zeros. So in that case, uh, we know that uh, the root locus will take a, oops, uh, a form like this. It's There will be a breakaway point somewhere in between. Uh, depending on where the open loop poles are, Okay, uh, you will just break out to the two asymptotes. Uh, and in this case, uh, because of the placement of the open loop poles, okay, uh, as k uh, goes from zero to infinity, the system basically is always unstable. Okay, so with a simple gain, we cannot make this system uh, stable. Okay, so that's one of the problems. In fact, we have uh, state space design is not the only way of designing uh, systems with more than one parameters. We have uh, seen PID control, okay, where uh, you had uh, up to three parameters in the uh, system. And we have also seen uh, some way of analyzing PID control. And we have seen that we can actually uh, design a system uh, with uh, achieving certain specifications uh, with a PID control. PID control is still an output feedback controller, okay? Because instead of uh, having uh, a simple uh, gain here, okay? Uh, so uh, this might also, uh, you know, be, uh, may also be uh, a PID type controller. Okay, but we have also seen the difficulties of uh, trying to design a PID controller because uh, that design is not uh, entirely closed form. So we cannot uh, exactly find out what the PID parameters should be uh, in that case. Okay, so the state space design that we will discuss uh, right now 
will give you a formal way of designing uh, systems with more than one parameters, okay, as I'm going to come back. Uh, you know, similarly, for example, your uh, root locus might uh, look something like this. So you might have, uh, let's say, uh, let's say three poles, okay. Uh, in that case, we know that uh, the root locus will, again, you know, will take a look uh, or will look like something like this. So, uh, but uh, the problem with this is that, uh, yes, you can make the system stable, but uh, so in this case, you have a very small uh, margin for feasible K, feasible K, and uh, system may be too slow, too slow. Okay, so as k goes to infinity, system becomes unstable. Okay, why it may be too slow? Because you see, these are the dominant poles. Okay, so the dominant poles um, are very close to the j omega axis. So, dominant poles are too close to j omega axis. Uh, interestingly, in this case, uh, being slow does not mean being safe and uh, stable because being close to J omega axis also means that uh, your system may become unstable if some of the parameters in the system uh, change over time or something like that. Okay. Now, this brings us to uh, basically the degree of freedom concept. Okay. Um, well, this concept uh, is not specific to control theory, but uh, degree of freedom means how many uh, design variables you have, how many free variables you have that you can change in order to change the behavior of the system. Okay, independent number of variables that can be changed. Okay, uh, and the idea is uh, that maybe if we had uh, more um free design variables free here is quote unquote uh that means that uh the variables that we can change uh design variables uh we could um place uh the closed loop poles uh, in a sense, better, okay, or maybe even arbitrarily. Now, we will see that, um, uh, in fact, um, if we have n free parameters, uh, n design variables, Obviously, this is for an end order, uh, end order system. Um, we can achieve arbitrary pole placement. Uh, again, this is under some conditions, actually. And in fact, uh, one of the conditions, or the maybe the most important condition, will be uh, uh, controllability of the system or the representation, subject to uh, complete controllability of the representation. Now, uh, as hinted by this uh, sentence, actually, the way to uh, arbitrarily place the poles will be through uh, a state space representation. Um, and we will now uh, uh, define this uh, in a more formal way.
Now we feel that um, these n parameters, um, these n parameters should be quite special, right? Uh, in order to have uh, this kind of a very strong effect on the uh, or the controlled effect on the system performance to have uh, such a controlled on the system okay now um, in fact, there is a special uh, pick of parameters uh, and a resulting algorithm to choose those parameters uh, that actually results in what we call the pole placement problem. Okay, so a special pick, pick of uh, n design parameters. Uh, and the resulting problem of finding those finding uh, those parameters is known as the pole placement problem. And now, uh, I, I will illustrate this uh, this problem uh, for you and I will also uh, try to explain how to solve it okay now uh, let's consider our state space system consider uh, the state space representation Sorry about the, the pen. It's uh, kind of difficult to write on the screen. It's very slippery and uh, the, my controller for the hand uh, is sometimes overshooting uh, the letters so that you get uh, very interesting um, letters or letter shapes. Okay, so uh, so we at this point we, uh, we are saying that, okay, uh, given a system, we will attempt the design in the state space. So we need to consider that we have a state space representation for this system, okay? And let's call this uh, x dot equals uh, ax plus bu, y is equal to cx, and for the time being, in order to maintain the correspondence between uh, the transfer function and state space, uh, let's assume also that this is a, a single input, single output system, okay? Uh, single input and uh, single output. Okay, that means um, that we have U and Y scalars. Okay, and also uh, we have X is a member of Rn, that means we have N states. By the way, let me also uh, kind of uh, on the side, okay, uh, let's say detour. Let me also uh, try to draw the block diagram of this state space. I noticed that I haven't done, uh, done this before, okay. Uh, remember what's happening here. So you have x dot being equal to ax, okay. So uh, the block diagram of this system actually uh, can be shown like this. So you have uh, x dot as a vector. Okay, so this is a vector signal. This goes into an integrator or a set of integrators. And here comes out uh, the states of the system, x, still a vector. Now we know that um, this 
actually, uh, if the states are multiplied uh, by the matrix A, and uh, are added to uh, B times U, so you have U here, U is a scalar, it's multiplied by B, but once it's multiplied by B, it actually becomes a vector. Okay? So if you vector add uh, the multiplication of X and A, okay? So it's this equation over here. AX plus BU is equal to X dot. And X dot is integrated to get X, and X is fed back uh, in, this, in this manner. And how do I get the output? Well, output is equal to C times X, where X is a vector, but Y is a scalar. So you have a matrix C here, uh, to which a vector variable goes in, and uh, a scalar variable comes out. Okay? Now, so this is equivalent to, uh, to this uh, system that I have given over here. Okay, so let me also put this in, in a box. Okay. Now let's come to what we will do uh, with, uh, with this system. Let's now assume that the state variables are available uh, from this system. So I will put, uh, again, uh, I will put this system in a box, x dot equals ax plus bu. I will now separate the states, right? So you have states going out from here, and I will just put this final part to obtain the output over here, okay? And we also have uh, the reference input v over here. Now, uh, what we call state feedback is basically uh, where we take the states and we multiply all the states by a vector of gains, k. Uh, k is not a scalar, okay, in this case, and I will discuss it in a minute, but the multiplication uh, that is coming out is a scalar. So what's happening here is that uh, this uh, scalar out of that multiplication from a vector x uh, to a scalar uh, and when it's subtracted from the reference uh, we get the input to the system u. Okay. Now this is called the state feedback and in order for this to work obviously uh, remember Kx, uh, kx is a scalar, so in order for kx to be a scalar, in fact kx has to be uh, a number of gain uh, coefficients, k1 to kn, uh, multiplied by each one of the states, xn. Okay, so kx becomes uh, basically k1x1 plus k2x2 uh, plus, plus uh, knxn. Okay, and therefore k is a 1 by n vector. Okay, now uh, k is our uh, uh, design parameter, essentially a gain vector, okay? So what happens is instead of having only one gain parameter, as in the case of a single input, uh, sorry, uh, output feedback uh, controller uh, with root locus design, for example, now we have n uh, design parameters that are buried in the uh, gain vector. So, uh, here's the question. Um, what is the effect of this feedback? What is the effect of this state feedback on the overall 
or closed loop system. Okay. Remember uh, when we had uh, simply a feedback configuration for uh, a simple um, feedback gain, uh, we were able to obtain the overall transfer function, the new overall transfer function, and the new denominator uh, of that, uh, and that would uh, indicate a new behavior for the system. So we need to see how this feedback changes uh, the system configuration. Okay, so let's apply this feedback that we have over here. So uh, you see that the input to the system is given by uh, V minus KX. Okay, and our original system was X dot equals AX plus BU. So only the only thing that we need to do is to put uh, this new input, which is a combination of the reference and the state feedback, into the input variable u to see uh, what's going to be the difference. Okay, so x dot equals ax plus b times u is equal to v minus kx. Okay, so clearly uh, we have ax component and we have uh, bv. Uh, where V is the reference to the system, so it's the new system input uh, of the overall system, minus B times K times X. Now I can regroup uh, the states uh, in the beginning. So I have A minus B times K times X uh, plus B times V. This is my X dot. Okay. So this is clearly a new system. Why? Because you have a new uh, A tilde matrix with A tilde instead of oops, instead of uh, A. Remember that the characteristic equation of the system is actually determined by uh, the determinant of uh, SI minus A. So the A matrix uh, actually determines what's going to be the denominator polynomial of the overall system. Uh, uh, henceforth, the uh, closed loop poles of the system. So having a new A means that you have a new system uh, dynamics. Okay. So uh, remember here, uh, you know, we can do this uh, subtraction A minus BK because remember what BK is, right? BK is equal to B is actually uh, composed of B1 to BN. It's a column vector. And K is a row vector, K1 to KN. So uh, BK is actually an N by N matrix. So remember, in order to add or subtract two matrices, they need to be of the same size. So you should always make sure uh, that um, uh, whenever you have a multiplication of two matrices, the result comes out uh, compatible with uh, the operation that you're putting it in. Okay. Um, now, note that we um, here, you know, B did not change. And also C did not change, okay, as a result of uh, state feedback, okay. B and C stays the same. It's only the A matrix uh, that is being affected. So our new system, uh, if we want to put it again here, a new system is simply uh, X dot equals uh, A minus BK times X plus B times V. V is the new system input, and Y is equal to C times X, okay? Now, let me show you how this change in the system actually leads to uh, a design algorithm, okay? 
Now, and this will also link uh, the controllable canonical form with, with this problem, okay? Example. So consider a system, a system given in a controllable canonical form. Okay, so uh, you will see that uh, if the system is control in controllable canonical form, in fact, uh, solving the pole placement problem will be uh, very easy. And uh, also, uh, when the system representation is in controllable canonical form, we also know that the system is completely controllable by definition. Okay, because the system in canonical, controllable canonical form is always completely controllable. Okay. So, uh, in order to solve the pole placement problem, uh, the system being completely controllable will be a prerequisite uh, for that problem, okay? So, let's um, uh, write down our uh, canonical uh, form system matrices, okay? Uh, this is a fourth order system, so I will have uh, a 4x4 four four A matrix. Uh, I am putting this in the canonical form, okay? And uh, also, uh, I use the transfer function coefficients in order to construct, uh, okay, so let me put the transfer function first. Transfer function of the system, okay? It's given as uh, g of s, is equal to, uh, let's say, the denominator is composed of s to the power 4 plus a1 s cube plus a2 s square plus a3 s plus a4. And also uh, in the numerator, I have b1 s cube plus b2 s square plus b3 s plus b4. Okay. So, uh, from this uh, transfer function, uh, the canonical form is very easy to construct. Uh, I just pick the coefficients, uh, minus a3, minus a2, minus a1, uh, gives us the A matrix. Also, the B matrix is equal to uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. We can also put down uh, the C matrix, but I don't need to because uh, C matrix uh, is basically unchanged and doesn't uh, really contribute to uh, the problem as you will see. But again, you know, let's put it down for completeness, okay? So B4, B3, B2, and B1. Okay? So uh, what happens with the feedback? What happens with the feedback? Uh, so instead of the A matrix, I have A minus BK matrix. Let me first calculate the BK product, okay? So B is a 0, 0, 0, 1, a special B for the controllable canonical form. And I have K1, K2, K3, and K4 is the fourth order uh, gain matrix, uh, gain uh, vector. So this product, uh, if you do this, you see this is a four by one matrix and one by four matrix. Uh, so the result will be a four by four matrix. If you uh, make the calculation, zero times K1, zero times K2 and so on, all zeros in the first row. Similarly, all zeros in the second row, all zeros in the third row. Uh, in only the last row, I have one times the coefficients. So I will have K1, K2, K3, and K4. So what is my A uh, minus BK? Let me change the color. Okay, so what is my A minus BK matrix? 
uh, that's going to be simply uh, my A matrix minus this BK matrix. So that's going to be uh, uh, mostly it's going to be the A matrix. Uh, sorry, uh, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And in the final uh, row, I will have, sorry, let me just make this a bit larger. Okay. So minus uh, A4 minus K1. Uh, minus A4, sorry, uh, that's wrong. I have... I don't need the parentheses here because I have minus A4 minus K1. Here I have minus A3 minus K2. And so this is one entry here. Here is, oops, here is another entry here. Minus uh, A2 minus uh, K3. And finally, minus A1 minus uh, K4 okay okay so looks like only the last row uh, have changed and uh, what is uh, important here is that uh, a tilde matrix is still in controllable canonical form uh, okay, if you look at the matrix, the form of it is unchanged because you have this uh, zeros and ones in the first uh, three rows of the matrix. Only the last row has changed. Okay, so it's still in the uh, controllable canonical form. Um, what does uh, it allows me to allows me uh, to uh, construct the new transfer function uh, transfer function uh, very easily uh, meaning that uh, I don't I don't need to explicitly compute uh, the transfer function but I can simply transfer the coefficients from the last row to the denominator of the uh, transfer function uh, so the new uh, transfer function function will be simply uh, let's call this G new of s and that's going to be uh, unchanged in the numerator because the C matrix did not change so I have B1 s cube plus B2 s square plus uh, B3 s plus uh, B4 and in the denominator, I can use the coefficients in the A tilde matrix to construct uh, the denominator coefficients. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to fit in uh, fit it here. Uh, so I have S4 plus A1 plus K4, S cube plus uh, A2 plus K3 times S square plus uh, A3 plus K2 uh, S, okay, I couldn't fit it, uh, plus uh, A4 uh, plus K1, okay? So, uh, numerator the same, denominator, that means the poles uh, changed. Okay? The closed loop poles actually. Uh, the uh, closed loop poles have changed. Okay? So let's now, uh, okay, uh, think about it for a minute. Okay? Now, under state feedback, we have a new transfer function with a new characteristic equation 
And each coefficient of the characteristic equation actually is a function of one of the design parameters. Wow. Okay. We have four design parameters, K1 to K4. Each one of those parameters actually takes part in defining a coefficient of the characteristic equation. Now think about how we can use this to uh, actually design uh, a system with uh, desired uh, pole locations, okay? Now let me uh, formally uh, kind of uh, describe that, okay? So here is the design problem. Uh, given um, closed loop pole locations, closed loop pole locations, in fact, n, uh, n poles at specific locations uh, determine. Uh, design parameters uh, K1 to Kn to achieve uh, given pole locations. Okay. Uh, here's an example or partial example, let's say. Uh, suppose uh, we want all poles at S1 to N equals to minus 1. So I want all poles to be located at uh, minus 1 on the real axis. So how can I determine what the uh, design parameters should be? Okay, so we will use... Uh, our above result. So what is the desired, our desired pole locations are at uh, all at minus one. Desired characteristic equation, <coughs> equation as a result, uh, will be uh, Q desired of S. Uh, that's going to be S plus one uh, to uh, have a pole at minus one, but we will have, uh, let's continue with n is equal to four, our example. So uh, we have s plus one to the power four. If you expand this, uh, we will have s four plus four uh, s cubed plus six s squared plus four s uh, plus one. Uh, please uh, remember uh, the Pascal's triangle, right? Uh, in order to, uh, and the binomial uh, Pascal's triangle and, and the binomial, binomial theorem. Okay, so what does that give me is that I can very easily determine all the coefficients uh, of uh, different powers of, uh, so you uh, add these, right, 1, uh, 3, 3, 1, and then uh, 1, uh, 4, 6, 4, 1, okay? So you just combine these numbers uh, in order to get uh, all the, so this starts with 1 here, right, uh, and so on, okay? So that's how uh, you can very easily find a power to the power 4 of s plus 1. Okay? Um, so pick uh, k1, k2, uh, k3, k4. Okay? Uh, remember that uh, we have already calculated how uh, the characteristic equation is affected. So what I have is that I will just equate the polynomial coefficients. Okay? equates uh, polynomial coefficients of, uh, actually not of, but 
uh, equate the polynomial coefficient. So you have, for example, uh, 4 here, and that 4 corresponds to uh, the polynomial coefficient here. So I have a1 plus k4. So I have uh, equations such as a1 plus k4 is equal to 4. Uh, that means k4 is determined by uh, uh, 4 minus a1, a1 from the given system that I started the design with. Okay. Uh, similarly, I have uh, obviously a2 plus uh, k3 is equal to 6, a3 plus uh, k2 is equal to 4, and uh, a4 plus k1 is equal to 1. So from each one of those, you can determine uh, a different k. Okay. So, sorry, uh, what is this? 6 minus uh, a2 and uh, k2 becomes uh, 4 minus a3. And similarly, uh, I have k1 equals 1 minus a4. Okay. So, uh, all gain uh, parameters determined uh, as a function of a given system, system coefficients. Okay, um, so uh, AIs are known from the given system, right? So, uh, so let me note because of of the controllable canonical form, it was because of this controllable canonical form that uh, this problem became so easy, and in fact, all the equations in terms of each k uh, have become decoupled from each other. Okay. Uh, controllable canonical form the design problem was very easy so the next time we will explore uh, an example where the system is not in the con uh, controllable canonical form and we will see uh, whether or not we can still solve this problem in order to find uh, the state feedback gain vector uh, in order to uh, locate the poles uh, arbitrarily. Okay, so I'm going to break here uh, for this session. Okay, see you the next time.